Okay, let's see if this thing's gonna work this time. Uh, what I realized the problem was is my Wi-Fi was turned off, so everything was working. Uh, just the Wi-Fi on my phone had been turned off for some reason. Um, so here we go. Uh, this is the studio. It is a lot bigger than anything I ever had before, which is nice. As you can see, I still have not unpacked, even though we moved here about a year ago. Uh, but it's slowly coming together. The desk is kind of an extension of what I had before. This is all the Alpha shelving system from the container store. And before it was just the one side, and now I added another side just for an L. And uh, then I have the craftsman, craftsman uh, drawers from before. Basically just expanded. I still haven't set up all my books and, and whatnot. It's, it's really not put together, which is why I haven't done a studio tour before. But uh, since we have a lot of time and everyone's stuck indoors right now, I figured why not do it now. So, uh, start off with the uh, technical stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's working a lot better now because uh, my Wi-Fi was turned off. So, uh, we'll start off with my printer. This is an Epson P400. Uh, the reason I like it is because you can fit uh, through the front, you can fit illustration board. And uh, which is really important for when I'm doing my digital drawings, I can just print it out onto the illustration board. And uh, usually the paper feeds from up here. But when you have the really thick paper, the, the board, it has to go through the front and then you have to pull this guy out. Uh, and then it actually comes out the back for a little bit while it's getting itself situated. So Epson P400 is great. Um, underneath that is the Epson GT 20,000. That is an 11 by 17 scanner I bought in 2009 for about a grand. And it was a... Uh, a good in uh, oh <laughs> okay we can do an interview later uh, so this thing has been really good for me uh, it's been working since 2009 and uh, still going strong and this is this is what I, I scan my penciled art my ink art and uh, even my painted stuff it all uh, goes pretty well uh, of course the gouache uh, scans a lot better than things like oil but uh, I don't paint in oil anymore thankfully uh, next up we have a flat file, and uh, these unfortunately are not made anymore, but I wish I'd bought two uh, from the beginning. Uh, I've got my paper and stuff up here. Um, up here is original artwork. Here are the boards. This is what I paint on most of the time. It's Strathmore Series 500 illustration board that I, I buy in big sheets, and then I cut it down to 11 by 17 or 13 by 19. There's my pumpkin. Pumpkin, I'm giving a, a tour of my studio. Are you gonna come help? You can't be on screen though, okay? So you gotta, I'm gonna be recording this way, all right? But you can put your hand here and say hi. Hand here. Say hi, everyone. This is Ripley. This is my little baby girl. All right. Dada, what was, why was it talking? Why am I talking? Well, I'm talking to all the people who are watching this and who will watch. I'm going to show them some of my original artwork. Do you want to hold it? Do you want to be my camera girl? All right, you got it? All right, we're going to show them some original artwork. You ready? But who is even watching us? Well, I don't know. People out in the world who are probably stuck at home just like us. Okay, so we've got Spider-Man, the famous... Famous scene from Amazing Spider-Man 3. This was done for the Folio Society box. And this was too. These are the pencils. I can see it. Yeah. Hey, we're giving a tour. Okay. Hold on. You got him? I have to go close to me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you got it? It's been, uh, I've been doing a lot of art lately. 
How do you like drawing on, <laughs> is that April O'Neil? Yes, it is. <laughs> How do I like drawing on Bristol? That's pretty much all I draw on these days. Uh, that's all I've ever drawn on, pretty much. Uh, this is Strathmore Series 500 uh, Semi-Smooth. This is what uh, me and my dad uh, use pretty much all the time. Uh, although he, he was saying lately that uh, he bought some and inside the package, even though it said it was semi-smooth, it was actually the plate finish. And he contacted Strathmore and I think they were going to replace it for him. But I bought some from Jerry's Artorama and that was the correct stuff. Uh, I, I had it sent to my dad. He said it was right. So I don't know what kind of supply issues they're having, but this is usually what we draw on the semi-smooth version. Uh, and, you know, as long as it's not too much paint, you can actually watercolor on it. So here's an example of uh, some studies from Hellboy. This is from um, the story we did back in 2015, uh, written by Chris Roberson. Uh, it was Beyond the Fences, I think it was called. But a three-issue miniseries, and that was a lot of fun. Character studies, there was a commission uh, that I never finished. It was uh, Calvin and Hobbes done in Disney style. Uh, some character studies of General Ursus. Uh, quick color study on a commission I did. And then this was Alien 3 cover that my dad painted in gouache. So I penciled it and then he printed it out and he painted all this. It was done in the style of Diego Rivera. So we wanted like a mural. Um, <laughs> it's for for a bunch of communists in space. It was a lot of fun. I really really enjoyed that story. Here's uh, kind of my unfinished pile. So this was the <laughs> famous shirtless bear fighter. Uh, I did not. I couldn't hit the deadlines. So Stop right about here. You can see where the face is pretty lacking. Um, I had to stop, you know, I finished the background, I finished the arm, the pandas, and I just ran out of time. Oh, there's Vietnam, and I uh, finished, you know, the foliage and uh, the water. But, uh, you know, what, what usually takes the time is uh, the figures, the hands, and the face, and I just finished all that digitally because it was really down, down to the minute. Uh, oh yeah, that, that's from YouTube when I did a, a recording on how to ink. Here's an unfinished Black Panther cover, number seven. Uh, I had to finish this one digitally. You know, I got pretty close, um, but then just had to call it quits because deadlines don't care. Oh, there's a printer's proof of the Avengers. Uh, I'll, I'll show you the actual uh, poster pretty soon here. Uh, but kind of when I was working on it, I would print it out in uh, two 11 by 17 sheets and then tape them together and put them up on the wall. Just to, you know, this, this I think is finished. But uh, at certain points, I would, I would do the unfinished. Yeah, so here was, was about when I was maybe halfway through. You know, almost everything had been penciled, but uh, nothing had really been rendered yet. You know, with, with this many characters, uh, you really just, yeah, it's, it, was, it took me about 400 hours, put it that way. Uh, so uh, I was really thankful to have the job, but also very, very thankful that the job is finally over. I think this is when it was pretty close to finished, not quite. Do I have a favorite character to draw? Ah, it changes all the time. I mean, I love Spidey. Uh, do I paint on the same boards as pencils and inks? Uh, yes, it's all Strathmore Series 500, and the Series 500 just means it's made out of cotton, which means, it, one, it's archival and acid-free, and for another, it holds up really well to water. So I, I use the semi-smooth for most stuff for drawing, and then I use the illustration board version or the wet media board version, which is even thicker, if I'm going to do like heavy painting, uh, like if I were going to do this, I would do it on uh, the wet media board, especially because it's it's big. It's 16 by. I think that's it for there. Actually, you know what? I've never really shown this stuff before. So some 
artwork that I need to get framed. <laughs> Can I tell how I found out Hellboy doesn't have a belly button? Well, I asked Mike Mignola. That's how. Uh, here is April O'Neil by Jaime Hernandez. Uh, I get this framed. You know, like I said, I still haven't really set up my studio. Uh, here is Baxter Stockman by Jesse Ham. I love this piece. I mean, it's just awesome. Here, Praying by Eric Talbot. This is actually, I think this is what got me started on a Ninja Turtle collection. And this one's by Cameron Davis. This is just a print. A friend of mine from uh, RISD. And here is an original Ryan Minerding drawing of Spidey. Perhaps you've heard of him. Who is a bigger inspiration to you, Hal Foster or Alex Raymond? I don't know. It kind of depends on what mood I'm in. Here's a good one by Riley Brown. I think I bought this after like his house burned. He was trying to make some money, so it's a good excuse to pick up something I've been meaning to. I love this one by Maris Wicks. She's another friend of mine from RISD. Hulk doing yoga. All right. But anyway, I'm, I'm getting distracted here. Getting distracted. Um, so the Alpha system is nice because you can kind of put shelves wherever you need to. Yeah, Alex Ross is definitely one of my biggest inspirations for sure. Uh, this is all my original art here. And then up here is my computer. This is a iMac 27 inch, uh, early 2017. It does pretty much everything I need it to. Uh, 32 gigs of RAM. And uh, I'm probably gonna upgrade to a laptop sometime this year, so long as civilization doesn't collapse. Um, just because I have found that I need to be able to work remotely pretty often. So I'll just have one, one, right now I have this and an old laptop and I just want to combine it into one super nice laptop so I don't have to keep switching files back and forth. Here is my pride and joy, uh, my gun collection. I still haven't really set up the LEDs, but uh, I will someday. Uh, I like using one six scale for reference because it's just so super convenient. Um, eventually, once I get this all figured out, I'm gonna have you know, this is reality, and then up here will be one six scale fantasy. So, uh, the Infinity Gauntlet and Cap, Cap Shield. I want to get a little Mjolnir. Uh, my parents just got me this little. <laughs> I love that trap. <laughs> I was a huge Ghostbuster kid back when I was my daughter's age. Uh, oh yeah, and then up here is all the things I sculpted for Mythos. Uh, the last one I did was in like 20, 2010. That's Mary Jane in the background. I didn't even ever uh, bake her, so she's still technically not finished. But, uh, you know, I really like thinking in three dimensions, so these help me out quite a bit. Um, there's my wife's headphones. She's actually been working down here while I take care of the kids. Um, up here we have Captain Catastrophe. Um, I like using these little guys. This is one of the body kun, kun, I don't know how to say it, figures. Uh, I like this. This has my favorite, mm, like, posability. Uh, but the other one I have is from these guys. You can get them on Amazon or wherever. Um, same scale, but just a little bit more sculptured. And I like the way... Uh, so it holds form shadow, shadows really well. Uh, I want to say they're Figma. Honestly, I can't remember. I've, I've posted about them before. Uh, there is my Ripley watch that my wife got me, which is awesome. I'm not wearing it right now. And then uh, these guys are probably bootleg, but I bought them because they're just such great sculptures. I think they're from the Hot Toys. And I ordered them from China because I'm a bad person. Moving on. Uh, up here we have Copic markers. And uh, I guess I should show you what my favorites are. I love these pens. 
These are uh, Copic pens, the Copic multi-liners. Uh, 0.2 is a little small. I don't use that very much. I usually use a 0.3 or 0.7, uh, depending on what I need. Um, I don't have a ton of Copic, but this is enough to like do a commission if someone wants it on a sketch cover, which I usually don't like painting on, so uh, the markers work a lot better. Um, here is my trusty Pentel uh, pocket brush. I got the pink version. They just actually came up with a whole bunch of new ones, all different designs that are really cool. Uh, but this is my, my workhorse. I mean, I use this for everything. Um, the Kurataki is nice, uh, but you have to be careful with these ones because I really like the way they work, but they, some of them are waterproof and others aren't, and I only like the waterproof. Uh, because if they're waterproof, it means you can watercolor over them. All my brushes, um, most of them are silver brush. Um, I bought one really nice one from uh, Rosemary. I think it's Rosemary and Company, something like that. It's based in the UK. And like, since I bought it, I, I haven't painted because <laughs> life's just been too crazy. Um, but you know, silver brush is great and they're not, not that expensive. Okay. Um, moving right along, I've got my craftsman tool chests. I still haven't set all this up, even though we moved in a year ago, but my paints would go here and all my paints are like, uh, uh, Let's see, Holbein and oh, that's my birth certificate. <laughs> uh, this is acrylic gouache. Was Raph my favorite Ninja Turtle? Yes, he was. Still is. Uh, this is acrylic. I used to use this more often. I still do sometimes, especially if I'm doing a, a sketch cover for like Hero Initiative. Uh, but mainly I use straight up gouache and watercolor. Uh, I just bought this. These are helping hands. Um, for soldering. I've never soldered before, but I I want to do it. <laughs> and I I just bought a bunch of, a, bunch of uh, a whole squadron of X-Wings. Okay. I've been stocking up for the apocalypse, so I got about five of them. Um, oh yeah, here is my really awesome lightsaber. I think it's awesome. I turn it on at least once a day. It was very expensive and I don't recommend getting it unless you have money to burn. And uh, I guess I had money to burn at that moment. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's see what else I got. Oh yeah, I wanted to show off some original artwork. So I'm gonna put this here and you can you can come in, Pumpkin. I'm just showing more artwork. I'm almost done. All right, so. Give me one second. Here we go. So here is the big old poster that is from Avengers Infinity War. I want to again show you guys a close up. Uh, this is all done digitally. Uh, using mostly uh, brushes from Kyle T. Webster and from Greg Rutkowski. Yeah, this is only for the cast and crew, unfortunately. Hey, pumpkin. I'm showing them my uh, Avengers poster. And then they gave me the logo and all of the copy. I just plug that in there. You gonna sit? You sit in the chair? Do you need help? All right, let me help you. No, Dad, I got it. You got it? I don't know. That's a little scary. Let me try. Okay, ready? Oh. You got it? So we're going to show them the Infinity War poster. 
And now we're going to show them the end game poster. Do you want to try and name everybody? Too much work? All right, here we go. So, here is the end game poster. I'm going to show you a little close up since I can't really post any HD images, but I figured I can do a uh, quick tour video. I wish they'd let me keep the. Uh, Mandala behind Spidey's head, but what are you gonna do? Scarlet Witch and Captain Marvel and Valkyrie there in the background. I uh, I always recommend Where if you're is Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel's up there. She's way in the back. You see him? Right be right behind Scarlet Witch. So I, I recommend to uh, anyone who's gonna be a superhero uh, in a big cast poster. Don't be the superhero with wings. You know why? Because if you're a superhero with wings, you have to go in the background. This is how it is. Down. Uh, the, I, the one I had to do again was uh, Black Widow because the reference I was using had been obliterated. <laughs> like, it still kind of looked like her, but... Uh, it just, it had been basically airbrushed for like toys and stuff. And so once I realized that, I went, went back to it and with like using other reference as uh, to kind of beef things up. Because it, it wasn't, it's still the basic, you know, it was basically there. But what they had done is they had kind of like airbrushed out the, um, like the her eye sockets on the on the bottom, it it didn't look right. It didn't look right, and I didn't catch it until uh, the producer took a look at it and said she just didn't look didn't Daddy. look right. Yeah, what's that? What are their what are what are their names? What are their names? You want to name everybody? Okay, well, you know who that is, right? Who's that? Can you say it? Uh... Okay, who's that? That's Groot. Come on, you know these guys. Groot, Rocket Raccoon. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Who's that? Who's that? He fights for liberty and justice. <laughs> I can't walk. Why, you, what, what shirt am I wearing? It's Captain America. You know that. Don't fall off this chair, okay? Scoot back, scoot back. All right, we got Captain America. We have Black Panther. We have Ant-Man and the Wasp. We have Okoye, a general in the uh, Wakandan army. And then we have Shuri. That's Black Panther's sister. And then we have Thor. We're missing Loki, though. I don't know where he is. He was going to go up there at one point, but uh, I couldn't. Well, we eh, it was long. Discussions on that. Uh, there is Stormbreaker because Mjolnir got destroyed. I was going to put Mjolnir here, but uh, yeah, there's, there's enough glowy things there. That's Gamora. That's Nebula. That's Hawkeye. Who's that? Oh. Yeah, you know, Hulk. you're sitting on the edge, girl. Scoot back. I cannot have you fallen. All right. Who's that? That's Pepper Potts. There's Bucky. There's, I said Shuri. Who's this? That's Korg. That's Korg. And I think it's Meek. Meek? I can't remember how to pronounce the name. Valkyrie, Scarlet Witch, Captain Marvel, Wong, and Doctor Strange. And who's who's that? Spidey. Yeah, that's Spidey. But and that, uh, who's that big guy in the background? Him? No. No. That one. That's Drax. I'm surprised you can see him. He's so still. There's Star Lord. Who else? Who else? <laughs> There's Mbaku. Remember him, right? Yeah. And then uh, War Machine or Iron Patriot. And uh, Mantis. Did I get everybody? I think that's everybody. It was. It's like something like thirty. 
30 characters, and it Wait, took forever. Wait, Dada. Yeah, what's up? You did not do the one above, above. Which one? I, I want to point it. Okay, point. Wong? Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, that, that's Wong. That's Wong and Doctor Strange. Masters of the Mystic Arts. All right. I can get down myself. You can? Without hurting yourself? Okay, I'm about to show some original art. You got it? You got it? I can't have you falling. Now I'm trying to understand. Okay, yeah, exactly. That is not a, a seat for kids. I'm going to do one with half. Ready? I'm going to show some original art. Okay, now this you can't touch. Here we have the Ninja Turtles. This was done for special collectibles and done in gouache on Strathmore Series 500 wet media board. And so, you know, the usual way I paint is I do a sepia underpainting in uh, gouache and then I start, you know, to get a little bit more opaque. This this was uh, this piece was helped along quite a bit by the sculptors working for Sideshow. Um, they gave me access to their ZBrush files, and I was able to light them in ZBrush. Which you know, because a, a lot of people have commented on this piece that like the shells look so 3D, and uh, that's totally because I had like perfect perfect reference. Uh, I just posed them the way I wanted and just uh, took pics. So uh, there's Leo, and uh, there's a version that we did a black and white version as well with all the red masks. That was done in Photoshop, and I repainted their faces in Photoshop as well. Um, oh, and then uh, Sideshow, uh, they ended up redoing the uh, Leonardo's swords. So I, I gave them a katana blade, and they wanted it to match the sculpture so they used a ninjato which has a square uh, hilt and uh, a straight blade there's gold sewer all right i think i got one more original art to show this is kind of like it's mostly finished and then completely finished in photoshop this is the captain america uh, the Winter Soldier poster. So again, painted in gouache on wet media board. And uh, I actually didn't like his portrait, so I ended up finishing it in Photoshop, basically just like smudging things until they looked right. Because um, back at this point, what I would do is I was like, looking at my computer screen off to the right, like pretty far away, instead of just printing out the reference. And I should have just printed out the reference so I could have it right next to me, you know, hold the reference here, paint it here. And instead I was like painting here and then looking over at reference and it wasn't like, it just, anyway, I didn't like his face, so I had to redo it. Everybody else did okay. Um, but as you can see, it's painted pretty thinly you know, I'll get kind of opaque right right there for any of the highlights. Uh, oh yeah, and then that's text. So uh, when this one, I, I, I transferred the drawing. So I, I designed the whole thing in Photoshop. And in order to transfer it to the board, I printed it out onto acetate backwards and then basically burnished it uh, against the board. And you know, it worked, but it wasn't perfect. And uh, the next time I did something like this, I actually just uh, went to a print shop and had them print my underdrawing onto the board. And that was, you know, it cost like 50, 60 bucks and it was totally worth it because, you know, if I had done it at home, it would have been A, bad and B, taken, you know, two, three hours. And uh, this, you know, that's basically what I do now. Uh, I haven't done anything this big in a while, so I haven't I actually haven't gone back to the print shop, but that's what I would do if I were painting this big. 
Uh, all the lines, the graphics are just taped out and then uh, peeled away. You can kind of see some of the texture from uh, where I go a little bit more opaque with the whites. It's all gouache, but it, with the white, I usually use acrylic gouache, which is, um, it doesn't reactivate when you wet it. There's Robert Redford. So there's that. Uh, let's see. Do you guys have any other uh, major questions? I'm going to uh, put up one more piece of art, I think. But let me know if you have any other questions. Do they pay well for a job like that? Uh, it is, it's one of the better paying jobs that I have. But in terms of the amount of hours I spend on it, it ends up being about the same. So, for instance, the Infinity War took me 199 hours, and the Endgame poster took me 399 hours. So it averaged out to be my usual hourly rate. But uh, you know, and I don't charge by the hour. You know, it's, it's a flat fee. Um, but I usually, you know back into the number by figuring it out, uh, dividing by the number of hours, and uh, it usually ends up being about the same. All right, let me see one more. What do we got? Give me one second. All right, and then I'll probably end with uh, Spider Man, the blue. What kind of scanner do I use? That GT20000. And then this is the original from uh, ASM640. I wanted to show you guys one of my Hellboy paintings, but I can't seem to find it at the moment. Oh, wow. Oh, thanks, guys. All right, so I think that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, this will remain up on YouTube, so if you have any other questions, it, uh, it'll be there. Um, and, you know, please find me on Twitter and Instagram and uh, Facebook. I haven't been on in a while. I'll try and stay away from there. All right. All right, guys. Thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you on social media. Everybody stay safe, stay indoors, and uh, be very, very nice to the nurses and doctors and healthcare workers that are uh, keeping us alive. <laughs> All right. Appreciate you guys watching. Take care. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Bye.